It's time for Monday Sports and joining us now is our sports reporter Sunday Shomari. Hello Sunday. I have a gut feeling you have great sports news for us today. Hello Esther, you are right. Let's start in New York where Kenyans continue to display dominance in long distance running on the streets of New York on Sunday. Newcomer Jocelyn Chepkos Gaze win in the women's race by 2 hours, 22 minutes and 38 seconds as her fellow countrywoman Mary Keitani took the second place. Having won four times in eight tries in New York, there's obviously a potential change of guard among female Kenyan runners. Chepkos Gay is the bold record holder in the half marathon. She's holding the second fastest time ever in women's open division, according to the New York City Marathon. Another Kenyan, Joffrey Kamuror, 26 years old, took the men's race in two hours, eight minutes and 13 seconds, winning in New York for the second time in three years. And his fellow countryman, Albert Korir, took the second place. In Premier League, Chelsea secured the best strike away of winning victories all competitions in the Premier League era after their 2-1 victory at Watford on Saturday. Meanwhile, Man United or the Red Devils are still facing woos after losing 1-0 at the hands of Bournemouth. What used to be Fergie or Ferguson's time for Manchester United scoring last-minute goals is now becoming Liverpool's cup of tea as they keep winning in the dying minutes of the game as they found a very late equalizer a stoppage time winner at Aston Villa to win 2-1. On the other hand, video assistant referees VAR were introduced in the Premier League this season to help make difficult decisions easier and eradicate clear and obvious errors, but it continues to generate controversy. And now to South Africa, which currently holds the Rugby World Cup Championship. Get this, it also has Africa's only national league of wheelchair rugby, the only full contact Paralympic sport. While wheelchair rugby is an amateur sport with limited resources, there is no shortage of dedication and determination. Maurice de Clark has more from South Africa's capital, Pretoria. The South African Wheelchair Rugby League Finals mean the country's best players literally get to crash things out on the court. Oki Anker of Pretoria dreamt of becoming a springbok, like many of the country's rugby-playing boys. But he broke his neck during a high school match in 2011. Now he considers himself honoured to have played twice for the Wheelbox, South Africa's national wheelchair rugby team. From the first day I was just loving the game and the, the contact and the, and the adrenaline and pumping is almost the same as normal rugby. We faced the Aka two times in 2013 and, and three times in 2015. Um, it was a, uh, a great experience to, to still face the Aka and then sing the national anthem. Laratu Nechani became Africa's first female wheelchair rugby player 12 years ago. After taking some time off, she's back playing with the Mustangs of Bloemfontein in Free State Province and encouraging the next generation of players. With the limited resource that we have, we are trying. And I believe that the Lord is going to take us through to where we need to go. Because now whatever we do, especially as a team, we are not doing it only for ourselves. Playing wheelchair rugby is pricey. An imported specialized high-performance wheelchair alone costs just over 8,000 US dollars. But a former wheelbox and Mustang player developed a beginner's chair that costs about one-fifth the price of imported ones. If we have the means to, um, as I mentioned, in, as in South Africa, create awareness amongst the sport with cost-effective uh, chairs, um, we can just as well do it in other countries and one of these days have um, you know, more African countries competing each other against each other. South African wheelchair rugby hasn't competed internationally since 2015 because it's simply too expensive. Officials say despite the cost, they are working to develop the sport across Africa. With our affiliation to South African Rugby Union, 
and the other rugby unions in South Africa, we're now slowly starting to create further awareness. And once that awareness has got a good foundation, we're then looking at rolling that out into the rest of Africa. After plenty of sweat, the Mustangs lifted the trophy for the fourth time running in this year's South African Wheelchair Rugby League. Finances permitting, South Africa Wheelchair Rugby hopes to compete internationally again next year. Marise de Klerk for VOA News, Pretoria, South Africa. What a great story. South Africans are ready to compete in rugby. And that uh, wraps our sports uh, for today. And Esther, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sunday, I stole the thunder from you today on the South Africa Rugby Championship. Yes. What more can you tell the viewers? Yes. What a story, Esther. You remember back in 1994, the president of South Africa was there with the Springboks. But this time around, it says the more of a bigger moment for the country to unite together, Esther. They really needed this championship this time around, especially, as you mentioned, a black captain for the first time for the Springboks. What an honor. Huge. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's so big. I mean, you know, it is. a country that went through apartheid. Yes. And now everybody, nobody, nobody cares about color there anymore. I know. Yeah, sports is good, right? Exactly. <laughs> sports is always great, Esther. Puts Sunday. people together all the time. Oh, boy. No <laughs> politics. Thank you so much, You're Sunday. Welcome. All right. Join Sunday Shamari next Monday for another sports report right here on Africa 54.